Hello, it's Ryan Gordon. Welcome to episode 14, Attack of the Middleware. Um, so we're going to start today by doing exactly what I threatened to do all through the last episode and rip out all the code that we wrote. Um, so if you recall where we left off with this, we had written a, zip, a little zip file processor that just burns through the entries and let you load them like their files so we can load Winamp skins. And we're going to rip all this out. I just wanted to show you what zip files look like, and they're not deeply mystical. But in real life, they have things like compression, but also they have just a million little corner cases that you really do want to have like some full-time code dedicated to this. So all of this is going to go away. Um, and we, in its place, are going to put uh, you know, another library I wrote called PhysicsFS. clone that real quick. Oops. There we go. And we're going to, people tell me I should be using git submodules, but I think they're a pain in the butt. So we're just going to do something unforgivable here and just clone this repository and just delete its git, uh, git, <laughs> its git configuration directory. So it's just part of our project now. Um, now physicsfs is not a terribly complicated project, and we're not going to get into a great deal of detail about how this project works, this, this separate library, but it's just a bunch of files, and you can just add them to your project, except we're going to be a little, we're going to do this the proper way here, because since you can basically compile all these things and not think too much about it, that's great, but it is a lot of uh, uh, source files, so we're not going to do the, the magic command line thing where I'm like, GCC, wall, dash, O, you know, we're not going to do that down here in my editor anymore. We're going to actually make a CMake file. Womp womp. I know. It was inevitable we were going to get there. We are there now. Now, CMake is not something we have to spend a lot of time thinking about. Um, just make sure. And I, I will tell you, as you're about to see, I'm about to copy and paste some stuff. I am not an expert on CMake. So I'm going to pull out a couple of very important things we need, and I'll just compare and contrast as I need to. I'll make this three. You should have version three by now. Projects, SDL AMP is the name of this. And we are going to do a couple of things here. First off, we're going to add a subdirectory, because one of the nice things, directory, one of the nice things you can do with uh, CMake is say, I have another CMake project in a subdirectory. Just build that as part of this thing so you don't have to mess with it in great detail. Um, so just add subdirectory, physfs, and that should be all you need, I think. Get used to doing this. Help command add subdirectory. Source stir binary or exclude from all. Okay, that'll work. Okay, so add that, and we're going to just set a couple of things here. Physics. What do they call that? Static. Where are you? Build static. We do not need a shared library version of this. We're going to link it right into our project. So we'll just go physics build static. True. And of course, don't bother building the shared version of it because that would just double the time that we're spending compiling stuff. So we'll say false to that and then add that, and then when you're done, you will have a target, which is a static library called physfs-static, which we're going to link into our thing. Add executable, executable, SDL amp, this is our actual program, which is made up of SDL amp.c, and we're going to need to do target link libraries. When we link SDL amp, we want to Make sure we do this right. Target link libraries. Target item. Okay, so we can just go STL amp and physfs static, which is a library that we created by doing that. So uh, that will be created with everything else. We can just say add that to our thing. Um, we're gonna need some other stuff here. Let me think. Um, well, I guess we're gonna need SDL. That's probably a good thing too. Let's see how we did this over here. So mostly. We thought when we got rid of GNU Audio Tools that we would not have to just cut and paste from other uh, other program other build scripts to get ours to work, but that's actually how it works anyway. Find package. That's what we need. All right, come here. Do CMake. Where'd you go, CMake? Where did you go? There you are. Okay. Um, okay. So before we do anything else here, we're gonna need. 
absolutely positively going to need to know where SDL is, and CMake will find it for us instead of us doing a magic command line thing. And it's required, which means this will not build if it doesn't find it. And I don't know why it has include durs and include dir, but that sounds like the kind of thing that would happen. Okay, so target include directories, is that what it's called? Yes, maybe. Target private item, okay. So, stealing up our, our program will need a private include directory, which includes the SDL stuff. Okay, cool. Um, and I guess it's also going to need, we'll put that there, I don't know if that's required. It's also going to need physicsfs source, because it's going to need to know where to find physicsfs.h, so we'll put that in there too. Is that enough for now? Might be enough for now. Let's find out. Um, yeah, okay. So we're going to make a directory. I like to use this uh, directory called cmake-build. Your mileage may vary. People like build. Buildbot used to come up a lot for other projects. Uh, and just cmake g ninja so that we build not with gnu make but with the ninja build tool which is super fast and efficient. We like fast and efficient so we're going to do that. cmake build type debug so we get our debug symbols. See if it works. All right, it seems to have made a project file. Let's see what it's going to build if we do this. J1V, and don't build anything. Lots of gobbledygook in here, but these are all the commands it's going to run to build this stuff. And it looks like it's building all of physicsfs. Oops, it built as a shared library anyway. I told you not to. We'll work on that. And then we need... Oh, my fan just kicked on my machine. What's going on? Did I spell that wrong? Maybe I spelled that wrong. But it did build SDLAMP there, and it's linking against the static version of PhysicsFS, so that's good. Okay, so that's, the th in theory, let's just run that. And that was all PhysicsFS, and oops, we forgot to link to SDL. That's a problem. We're definitely going to need to do that. Um, CMake, where'd you go? Target link libraries. Yeah, we're going to need that. I think this has the same problem, too, where it's SDL2 libraries and then library and i have a feeling this is like there were different versions of the sdl2 fine package stuff for cmake so you put both in whichever one happens to work for your uh what's on your system one of those two will link the other one will be blank everyone's happy let's see if that'll work ninja yep there you go okay so we're still here we're in a directory that does not have music.wave or the skin so we get this but that's okay let's copy those in here for now music.wave what was the other one? Classic to something or other. Okay, so it's I mean we're we're, we're linking against uh, physics FS, but we're not. Uh, we don't need to. Physics build shared. That should turn that off. It's gonna bother me. I'm gonna look one more time here. Build shared. Uh, maybe I'm crazy. I don't know. I'm not going to spend time on it right now. Worry about that later. Okay. Or maybe this does not work this way, and I'll have to, you know, fine, whatever. We'll, we'll deal with that later. Because we still get our static library by default, so it's fine. Okay. Um, da -da -da, target link libraries. Cool. We're cool. We got that. Okay, so we have everything we need now. At least we can start using PhysicsFS in this project after messing around with that for a little bit. So, of course, first thing you're going to need is to include it, physfs.h. Okay. And when you use it, you have to initialize it. So we'll throw it into init everything. If, and then we check the thing, because you're going to find that if you write a lot of libraries, you, you turn out that you forget how to actually use your own library. This is why you should always write documentation. It's not for other people. It's for you. Um, okay, so blah, 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 and it returns non-zero. Okay, I, just, I like to do it this way. I don't do it the SDL way uh, when I'm writing my own stuff. So you can just say if something fails, you go, if not, visfs init rv0. Panic and abort. Visfs init failed. Visfs. Air string. I'm going to show you what that is in a moment. Uh, let me find physics FS real quick here. There we go. Get.
get last error code. Is that what it's called? Error code? There it is. Okay. And unfortunately, this string is on everything, so we're just kind of set error code. Get error by code. Okay, so we want get error by code, which gives you a string, and get last error code, which gives you a number. And you can put those two together and get a meaningful string out of it. I'll move this in a second, but static const char visifs error string void. We don't care about that. Return get error by code and then get last error code. And this little helper function will get us a human string like physics, physics fs and it failed out of memory or something like that. And we'll stick that right up near the top of the file so that we can always get it. We'll put it right near panic and abort. And we'll just treat that the same as we use sdl get error. It's just whatever the last error is, that's how we get a string of it. All right, so Let's see. So we initialized it and init everything. And then so we need to then clean it up when we're done. We'll do that down here. S oh, not SDL. Huh? Physics FS. Fizz FS. D init. And we don't really care if this fails. I don't even know if that can fail. Um, let's see here. Um, that fix me is going to bother me. But I'm going to leave that alone for now. So we de-init the thing. Okay, so now we just need to load some files. Okay, let's do it. So up here somewhere we have load zip archive. All right, unload zip archive and this stuff. We're gonna get rid of all of this. Goodbye, all this code we just spent an hour writing. Goodbye, miss you. Boom, gone. That's just how that's going down. I mean, there's nothing to say about it. So let's go find where we actually load zip files here. There's only one place, really. That's going to be going away, too. But right here, load zip archive. I think that's the only place we do it. I'm going to just check. Load zip. Unload. OK, yeah, just right in here. Between these lines of code, we need to have a zip file. So let's do this. You know what? Let's do the free skin thing real quick here. Static void free skin. Because I'm looking at the thing right above it. It's driving me nuts. Win amp skin pointer skin. Move this right in here. See, that was easy. Free skin. And where was that other thing? The other place that wanted it. Goodbye. There, it's done. Okay. Free skin. Cool. All right. So, in here, when we try to load a new skin, we're going to do this instead. If not, fizzfs mount. Um, Bet your butt I'm about to look that up. PhysFS mount. So the way physics FS works, let me find it. There it is, okay. Neuter mount point append path is that it gives you as a library, it gives you a virtual file system, an interpolated file system. So you will say, take the zip file, take this plain old boring directory, take this seven zip thing, take this ISO file, and mush them all together into one file system looks kind of like a unix file system there's no drive letters or anything like that but the order that you add them to this list the order that you mount them lets files override other files that would be in the same spot and that's neat to like build games with you know mods and stuff like that where you can say once i mount this mod uh zip file it will override certain parts of the game and stuff like that uh it's a neat idea and we're not going to use that overlaying stuff we're just going to use it because it opens zip files really well and i mean who knows if you have a winamp skin that's in like the pack file format of duke nukem 3d you know it's a surprise it'll work but i know it's not really what we're going for here but anyway we're going to mount f name which is not actually an f name necessarily it could be a zip file or it could be a raw directory it will handle both uh both work here the mount point, we're going to say null. You could say something like this subdirectory, blah, blay, blah, there you go. The subdirectory, blah. And then that will be the root where the zip file gets mounted in this virtual file system. But we're just putting in null because we only have one mount at a time and only for a brief time. And yeah, sure, append it to the path. It doesn't matter. If that fails, just give up. Just return. Don't load the skin. Um, because uh, we don't need to even put an error message up because this will do at least some really 
embarrassing basic steps to try and draw some colored triangles where there should be a skin. So if it fails, it fails. What are you going to do? We're not even going to report an error. Okay, so while that's mounted, we don't need this anymore. We are going to keep this open rewrite thing, but we're going to take care of this first. We don't have zip anymore. We don't care about the F name because that's just part of the virtual file system now. So all we need is the file name itself. And that file system is global data within physicsfs, so we don't even need to like pass a handle around for that. And then down here, physicsfs unmount. I did better than Unix, I put an N in to unmount, it's not U mount here. F name. So when, wherever this archive is mod, deleted it from the virtual file system, so gone. So now we just need to come into open read write and pull stuff out of physicsfs instead of either a zip file or the file system. So these things can all go. And at the end of this, we want to have a read write ops so we can pass it through and I still can read a bitmap out of it or whatnot. Um, okay. Let me think for a second here. So we have this. What we need to do is a couple of things here real quick. Two things that are going to make our life very easy. These are not part of PhysicsFS, but there's a little C program extras in here that will help us in two very specific ways. One, we have one that will return a read-write ops. Um, so we do not have to try and figure out how to get from a PhysicsFS file handle to an SDL read-write ops file handle. There's already some bridge code written for that. So you just have to include this and compile it with the rest of your application. So let's do that real quick. All right, so include, whoops, come back. Include physics as extras physfs read write ops dot h. Uh, and we'll add that to our CMake file too, because we're going to need that down here too. So sdlamp and then physicsf, physics fs extras physfs read write ops dot c so it compiles as a c file and there's one other we're going to need here too let me find it real quick here ignore case there you go yes okay and now what this thing does is uh very simply says i give you a file name it figures out where in the virtual file tree this is in a case insensitive way so if this tries to read from a unix file system or it tries to read from a zip file it will change this buffer, it'll iterate through each part of the tree and find where in the buffer uh, you have. It'll try to figure out where in the file tree it actually is with the correct case and adjust that buffer. So, which solves a problem that we were ignoring before, where if it wasn't in the zip file, which we, in our old code, we were case insensitive searching. If you're on a Unix file system, if you're on, if you're running Linux, you're going to have a problem if main.bmp was spelled with capital M and stuff. So we're going to fix that too while we're here. What's it called? Ignore case. Let me get this. Ignore case. Okay, good. Okay, so and let's put that also in our CMake file, wherever you went. Not too many files open here. Let's try that again. Oops, that's the wrong one. That's the problem with having multiple ones. Ignore, ignore case. Good. And then we put that thing in. Mm, put that thing in the header. Yeah, we can put that there. Okay. Let's load this thing. Where'd you go? Okay, load skin, I guess we'll just find it from here. Open read write, here you are. Okay, so we want to do, let's move this up with our other physics FS stuff for now. Where are you? Panic and abort, and physics string, okay, there we go. Open read write, mm, having trouble hitting the right keys on the keyboard tonight. Okay, so, I'm going to do two things here. First off, physfs, what was this thing called? Extras, ignore case, locate correct case. Now this thing will return different errors to say like it was found or the whole directory was there but the final element was missing or you know, apparent directories. We don't care about that. You're either going to have a correctly cased thing or you're going to have a file that doesn't exist and then trying to open it will fail and that'll serve the same purpose so we're not going to mess with that one bit. Uh, one thing we do need to do, though, char pointer f name equals sdl string dupe f name because this is a const char, you cannot write to it, so we're going to make it a copy of it real quick, so we can not f name out of memory. Strictly speaking, I don't think it's an error here because we don't ever check it, but you know sometimes it's good to be thorough. So we'll do that. Okay, so then we 
locate the correct case. So this thing comes in possibly with the wrong one, this one, and it comes out with possibly the correct one. And then we need to actually open it, which is this guy right here. Open read. There you are. Where'd you go? Where'd you go? Okay, so SDL read write ops pointer retval equals open read f name. Okay. And then we are going to free that buffer because we don't need it anymore. Um, in theory, this should set an SDL error but if there's a problem, but I'm not going to mess with it. Um, and then that returns the thing we just opened. So now that should be good to go. And then that will pass through to... Where'd you go? Where'd you go? Open, read, write. There we go. So it'll come through here. It'll pull this out of the virtual file tree, make a uh, wrapper for SDL read, write ops, pass to the load texture, which will set that up and then close it because that's what load texture does already it did free it closes the file afterwards so that's all the more we need to do with that and that'll load that and then we unmount the zip file and that's it and if it isn't a zip file if it's a regular directory this code will also still do the right thing if i didn't screw this up let's find out if i screwed this up so um i think it's worth noting that when you you um are using CMake and Ninja to, instead of doing make clean, you do Ninja clean. And that just feels like that should be like an advertisement for like made services in your, in your, in your area, like Ninja clean, cleaning faster than an hour or something like that. And then of course, when you build something, you always want to know how long it takes. So it's time, you use the time command. So time Ninja, which just sounds like a Jean-Claude Van Damme movie from the early nineties. Um, okay, we're almost there, almost there. Let's uh, ninja through that again. Look at these actual errors. Too few arguments to free skin. That is true. That should have passed the skin we're freeing. And I did it again down here. Skin is also the global variable name, which is unfortunate, but let's see, that should hopefully fix it. Yes, okay. That really actually clean the time. That actually builds pretty quick still. 51 files. Takes a little more than a second to build still. So we're not doing terribly here. That's good. And yep, we still have our skin is still here. It's still doing the right thing, even though it came from a zip file that fizzfs loaded. So let's see if um, let's see here. Open. Okay, let's do this. Where'd you go? Put you over here. Make sure we can still drag and drop these things without exploding. Here's the atlas. Here's the hi-fi one. Here's our classic one. Okay. Yeah, I think I think it works. I think it works. Okay, good. And that's it. That's all you need to do to put a physics, physics FS into this thing. And now we can handle zip files much more robust. In fact, where are our Winamp skins at? Winamp skins. Come on, Internet Archive. Don't let me down. There you go. Let's download a few real quick. Let's see. Um, that one's pretty. Give me that. Sure, why not? Uh, how do I download it? Wait, no, this is the one I was just looking at. That's not the one I want. Not this one. This one looks cool. Oh, why is it... That's apparently a bug, but that's okay. We'll take that. Give me this thing. No, I don't want to load it in this thing. Give me this. Cleo, whatever. Let me see that thing. Now this is, now remember, these that we have here are ones I zip myself with no compression, but these are just regular ones from the internet, which is, boop, yep, works like a charm. There's our volume slider, balance slider, Hit these buttons all work. Okay, there you go. So already by default, we have gotten a much better, more robust uh, uh, program by dropping physics of S into this. and. I just want to be clear, this is not really meant to be like an advertisement for other libraries I work on, but let's put another library I worked on into this. So um, the other problem we have right now is that we're only loading wave files, which is not super impressive. So let's do STL sound. Um, since we're using STL anyway, we might as well use STL sound. Now, despite its name, this is not part of um, STL itself. This is not even really an official satellite library, except that I happen to be the one that 
wrote it. I'm in the wrong directory. I'm in the CMake directory, so let's move that thing down one. STL sound, git, goodbye. You're part of us now. Um, but what this thing does is basically lets you say, here is a block of data that is audio. Let's plug it in, let, let decode it from me, for me in blocks and feed it back to me. And that's exactly what we need. So that'll let us do something more advanced than just uh, just the wave files we're doing right now. So let's add another subdirectory for SDL sound because it also has a CMake file. And I should say that SDL sound is very similar in that for the most part, it's just a couple of uh, C files. Uh, it still does have timidity and mod plug in here as separate things, but everything else is just individual standalone C files that can handle these different file formats. So you don't have to, you know, find 20,000 dependencies just to make this thing run. Uh, it's kind of nice in that regard. So, all right, so let's uh, get this into CMake here. CMake, SDL sound, same thing as this, physics of S static. Let's also do SDL2 sound is what it's called, static. We'll put that in there. This also needs to include SDL sound source, and I think that's it. Let's just try and build that and see what happens here. Okay, there you go. So there's our physics FS stuff going. If you have, you know, a, a, a Winamp skin that's in Quake 1 pack file format or, you know, Descent 3 uh, hog file format or whatever. Um, Lots of fun things in there. Okay, and then down here, of course, is different audio formats that SDL Sound produces, uh, can deal with. So let's time ninja that out real quick. As you can see, it's a lot more files because Timidity and Mod Modplug have a thousand little C files to them. We're working on fixing that, but we have not yet. It adds a few seconds to this, which makes me a little sad, but we went from nine sec uh, one second to nine seconds. So well, it's disappointing, but we can live with that for now. Especially because as you know, we make changes to the one file, it won't have to rebuild those every time. So that's good enough. Um, okay, so now we need to, let's see, where's my editor? There you are. Oops, there's my very old copy of this. That left open here, projects, SDL, amp, there we are. SDL, amp, dot C, yeah, okay. Okay, so what we are going to do, we have a lot of things that say wave. Let's try and find those real quick. Wave buff, wavelength, these are going away. Goodbye. The stream's going away too, because we're not going to need that. And since we have this just one global sitting here, let's put it up with all the others so it doesn't look so lonely. Okay, good. Um, stop audio is going to look different in a moment. We'll deal with that. Let's just nuke this stuff because we don't need it here anymore. Stream's gone. Well, okay, let's let's deal with this then. So the way SDL sound works, I think I said this already, but is there is something called a sound sample. Where'd you go? Where'd you go? Come here. Here somewhere. Oh, we're gonna need one of those too. Go give me that. Sound audio. That stuff. Sound sample. We're gonna need that too. So let's just take a copy of both these things for our own notes. And basically, a sound sample just simply gives you a structure that'll let you uh, decode stuff. It'll tell you what format the data is in, the format's converting it to for, on your behalf, uh, instead of us having to do it before we hand it to STL. The data of what you've decoded, how many bytes it is, uh, da -da -dun, and some other nonsense. Okay, so we are going to need a new sample, I think it's called, from file. Let's go find that. Okay, yeah, we're going to need that. Before we do anything else, definitely I want to do sound init, right? Okay, this one's super easy. Although it does not follow the SDL conventions, non-zero on success. Let's do this real quick while we're here. Init everything. Okay. If if not if not sound init, panic and abort. Sound init failed. Sound get error. This works like SDL, but it keeps its own error state just so it doesn't interfere with SDL's error strings. Although oftentimes they are intertwined in other ways. And then de init everything, right? Sound quit, maybe, I guess it is. 
sound quit. Okay. And of course we're going to need include STL sound. Not to be confused with STL itself. Okay. Um, so that's in there. So now we need to load a WAV file, which is open new audio file right now. Or, or we're currently loading WAVs. We're going to expand that right now. Okay, so we're going to need a sound sample for that. We got rid of the stream, but let's go back to our globals up here and say static sound sample current sample equals null. Okay, because that'll be there. Open, what do I call it? Open new audio file. Yeah, okay, so we no longer have an audio stream. Well, STL sound does, but we do not. Make sure the audio device can't touch stream while we're freeing it. Let's do that real quick. Can't touch sample while we're freeing it. We'll just do this. Current sample. Oh, I guess we need to do that. Uh, sound sample pointer sample equals current sample. Yeah, okay. So we lock the audio device, so the callback is definitely not running, and we atomically set that global pointer to null. So the next time that, and then unlock. So the next time that callback runs, it's going to say, oh, there's no sample playing, and it just will play silence and return immediately, and you won't have a race condition. And that will give us all the time in the world to free sample sound free sample sample. It's just what we is, just no longer in the global variable. Okay, and we don't need this stuff for now. Although, I gotta tell you, this looks exactly like stop audio, so let's do that instead. Make sure the audio back can't touch sample while we're freeing it. Okay, yeah, let's do that. Current sample. Let's do this. If current sample. Yeah, okay. Lock the audio device. Lock it. Yeah, okay. So if there is something playing right now, then lock the audio device, because we don't want to race against all things. We just need to make sure the one specific thread, the audio callback thread, is not touching it. So it doesn't since the only other thread is us, we don't need to worry about locking anything to look at this, unless we're in the audio callback thread specifically. So let's see. So we lock the device, we free the sample, although actually we can just do this. Do I still have that? Yeah, okay, so if sample, same as I was doing before, we'll just set the sample, the current sample to null in here and then unlock it so that the, the thread is unblocked, current sample, and can just write silence without causing problems. Well, I guess I'm not sure that I mean, it would write silence anyway. It's fine. Whatever, it's fine. And then we can free it outside of there. And then it's done. Nothing for the audio. Once you hit that, there's nothing for the audio callback to do. So that'll work. So now in here, for opening a new file, just always stop the old one. Stop audio. And then you don't have to mess with this stuff. You know the current sample is definitely null when you get here. Sample equals null. Audio should have set this to null. Okay, we don't have to free it because it also took care of that for us. So now, now we don't have to load a wave. Now we have to do, oh, I lost it already. Where did I put that thing? New sample. Sound sample, sample, blah, 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 equals new sample from file. Did the wrong one. That guy. New sample from file. And this will be F name, the file name of it. Uh, desired can be null. This is saying I want it to be converted. Oh, we do want to convert it. Hang on one second here. Sound audio info. So as the, a bug in SDL sound, this should be const. This has never actually modified the SDL sound, but right now in the headers, it does not say const. So that is safe to leave like that. So we're going to get ourselves a nice little juicy global variable. Sound audio info. Audio device static. Here, I'll move the sound sample up next to this. Okay. Audio device spec. 
let's go let's go fill that in real quick and audio device all right so we have a definite thing we want the audio device to be opened as and feed the, a certain format we want to feed the audio device even if SDL has to convert behind the scenes because we want to be able to mess with this data as it goes through to change its balance and volume and bloody 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 so that is always that and in theory that means that we can just set this thing okay yeah if it opened say audio device spec let's just zero that out just in case audio device spec what do they call this thing Where are you there's format channels and rate format equals desired format because we force the audio device to this so that's what we want it to be and it's channels and then what was the last one rate which is different than SDL which calls it freak for frequency okay so those just keep there we have them that's good okay good and the device is paused when we start so the audio callback doesn't run while we set that up okay cool audio device spec we have not done that anywhere else okay let me hold that for a second open new audio file okay so like I said this does not overwrite this so even though it's not constant it's safe to pass that global to it and the buffer size I don't know 64 times we'll say 64 kilobytes it's saying how many bytes do you want to decode every time you read more from this audio file this might be too much might be too little but it's a good start we'll just say 64 kilobytes every time just for now and if not sample if sample fit if it failed to load the thing couldn't load it's not a wave file anymore audio file and then sound get error will tell you why couldn't find it it's not a valid file don't know what to do with this file stuff like that all right cool now we do not need an audio stream anymore because conversion will be handled inside SDL sound itself so we can get rid of all this garbage and then we do need to lock the audio device here because we are going to set the current sample the global variable that the other threads are going to pick up to the one we just opened and then when we unlock the audio device in theory it can start playing that sound immediately and that I don't think we need this anymore let's get rid of that SDL false because the only thing we did here is that we don't have to clean that up anymore because there was a couple of things like stream audio streams and stuff that's gone now so we can just do a simple return false there and delete a go-to which is always you know satisfying an angel gets its wings every time you remove a go-to okay so we have that where else do we use the word wave in here okay if previous is clicked we no longer have a stream so this can go but I'm gonna put a little blah 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 here so I remember to come back to this in a moment you no longer have a wave to free here this can be if current sample sound free sample sample current sample equals null although we're de ending I don't know if you really need to do that but let's do this after we close the audio device because otherwise the audio thread might touch that while we're freeing it so we'll do that in fact let's close the audio device first before we do anything else then we can do graphic stuff below it okay uh, current sample cool okay um, nothing else is called wave in here except for music.wave where do we have the word stream is there anywhere we failed to deal with that obviously the audio callback we're gonna deal with that momentarily new sample sample available to the audio yeah I'll leave these why not all right there's nowhere else we use the word stream so okay let's go deal with the callback again we love the audio callback it's our favorite thing okay so as usual SDL calls this function on a regular basis with whatever you want this thing to be that's just your own personal pointer uh, you got to put this many bytes into 
this array right here into wherever this is pointing to. And if you can't, you need to fill it with silence, which is what we are going to do. So uh, the input stream, this is no longer an input stream. This is now a sound sample. Sample equals a sound sample. That'll get pointer. Current sample, okay, cool. If sample equals null, if there is nothing playing right now, just write silence to the stream. Uh, which we're just writing zero bytes to it because it's, it's floating point, so all zeros is zero. Uh, and that will write silence to the thing. We don't have to get fancy with it and just bail immediately and do nothing else. So then that's easy peasy, and now we can do the actual audio callback when we need to get data into this thing. Now we're going to do this in a loop because there's one little disconnect here that we need to. Well, len is greater than zero. Well, there are still bytes to be written to the stream. Um, so sound samples do not give you X number of bytes. It always decodes a block of data and says, here's how many bytes I decoded. So we're gonna to have to keep track of how much we've copied here because it won't necessarily, it's almost certainly not going to match up with what the callback wants and needs. So we'll say while length is zero is, is bigger than zero, while well, we still have more to feed to the audio device. Um, and we're gonna need two more statics for this. Let me get that real quick here. Current sample, there we go. Static uint32 sample available. I don't know if that's the, what I want to call it, but we'll do that. And sample position. We could probably get that down to one because some of that information is available inside. And it's fine, we'll just do it like that. Okay, so this is going to tell us how much is left of the current buffer that hasn't been fed to the audio device yet. And this is going to tell us what the byte position in that uh, uh, buffer is so we can deal with that. Okay, so let's do that. Let's go down here. We're going to fix that up in a couple of places in a moment. In fact, let's do that first because this is the kind of thing that we forget to do if we don't do it. So lock the audio device. So it's null. Whenever we close, the, whenever we, you know what? Yeah, okay, let's do this out here. Whenever we stop the audio, always reset these to zero. Come back, there you go. They may need to be threaded, but that's good enough for now. And then, or uh, atomics, but that's good enough for now. When we open a new audio file, we call stop audio, which will reset those, so that's good. And then, this is the other thing, previous. Now we can do this. Whenever you rewind the thing, we, we click the previous button, which in this case is just rewind until we make better changes to this. If current sample, this would be a good time to also lock the audio device because we're gonna mess with this uh, sample while it might also be reading from it. So lock the audio device. If there is a current sample, then we want to go sound rewind. Is that what it's called? Rewind. Yep, there it is. And we're going to choose not to care if this fails for the time being until that actually happens in real life. We should only fail if it's not seekable or we're not initialized. You know what? I'm doing it anyway. It doesn't matter. Sound rewind. Okay, so if int rc equals one. All right, rc equals sound rewind current sample. So that'll put us back at the beginning. So the next time you read from this thing, it will give you the start of the audio file again, like we had hit rewind. There you go. If there's a current sample, then rewind it. Okay, dun dun dun. And then we'll set these back to zero too, so it's forced to read again. Unlock audio device. Audio device. Okay, so then the audio device can start playing again. And we will do this. If not RC, we'll throw up an error message. Why not? What was this thing? If it failed for some reason. Rewind audio file, sound get error. Okay. And then, you know, what are you going to do? You just have to say we showed an error. Life goes on. Okay, cool. Um, so now we just need to do the callback, and then I think we are going to be golden on this. So 
Okay, so while, back to this, while there's still stuff to feed the audio device, and we know what these things are, where'd you go? We know this. Don't actually set these here, okay. Um, if sample available equals zero, there's no audio left in the buffer, we need to read more of it, then we uh, are going to do sound decode where'd you go there we are bum 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 returns the number of bytes okay so we just go what was a unit 32 okay const unit 32 bytes read equals sound decode current sound yeah, it's just called sample sample if br if bytes read equals zero, then there's nothing else we can do. It's time to just give up. Stop the audio. We've hit the end of the track. I'm realizing something here. Stop audio. Well, I guess we don't have to lock the audio device because we're already here. Okay, let's just not stop audio then. I feel like it would be nice to do that, but let's just set the current sample to null and free it I guess sound free sample this is why by the way you lock the audio device before you touch these things then we set it to null so that everyone sees it's null and I really you know what I'm gonna take these here for now now remember, when you're in the audio mixer, that lock is held already, so you don't need to grab it here. Fix me, rework, stop audio, and use it here. We'll do that as a fix me for later, because we're running kind of late now, and I want to get this done. Okay, so if we came through here, if it was bytes read to zero, then... There is nothing else to do but write some silence and get out. We did everything we could. We're done. Write silence and bail. Oops. Write silence and bail. And that's that. Oh my gosh, stop hitting that button, Ryan. Bail. Okay, so... Otherwise... Sample available is what? It's a UN32. Okay, good. So at this point, sample available becomes bytes read. Cool. Sample position goes back to zero because we have a fresh buffer to read from. And we have data again. So um, now we just got to get that thing into the audio stream so we can do. Uh, let me see. Const UN32 copy. The amount we're going to copy is whatever is less between sample available and went 32 len so it's never more than what we have versus what we need to feed to the thing uh, and then we go SDL mem copy output stream come back output stream output steam stream now the buffer inside of the sound sample is a void pointer, which is unfortunate because it would have been much easier if it was UN8 so I don't have to cast it like this, but we do, so whatever. Sample buffer plus sample position and then the amount we plan to copy here. Size T. Doing all sorts of casting here, don't mind me. Okay, so now we have some amount of the output stream is now filled with this. And now a lot of this is just hooking into where we had this before, which is here. Okay, we don't need converted bytes anymore. We know if we got here, we definitely had some stuff. Cert, come back, cert. Copy is greater than zero, I think, right? Because that should have checked if length was there, and that should have checked in here if the position was greater than zero. Okay, so that should theoretically do it. So now we come down here. Let's move these out of here because this is a loop and these don't change. So 
put these up at the top right here there we go um, num samples is going to be copy is no longer converted bytes although technically that would have still been a correct thing to say copy divided by that we'll make that an int okay float samples output stream I think all of these are the same because we just copied this stuff in here already. Here, I'll move this up so we don't have multiple things. Say samples, right there. Samples. We'll do that. And this will go through the loops. These are all the balance and volume things we had before, which still have bugs. We need to fix them. We're working on it. And then while length is greater than zero. So, so if you go through here and you do a bunch of work, oh, we need to do one more thing here. So we've the stuff, by the time you get to the end, samples is all, that stuff we just copied is all processed and ready to go. But in case we still need more, in case we read less than a full length of samples from the file, and we have to hit this widget down here and bump up and see that we're not done yet and need to read more, let's adjust all these variables. C equals copy, output stream. It's a UN8, good stream, plus equals copy. That moves ahead because we already did some of it. Um, sample available. We ate some of these, so we'll do that. Sample position moves ahead. Just adding this to all kinds of variables here, don't mind us. And that'll move you in the thing. They'll say we're copying less of it. We have less available. Yeah, put stream moves. I think that's it. We subtract sample available from what we have. So you might get down here and be like, we still have more that we didn't do, so it'll come through and say, oh, we still have more to, we're done if we're, this is zero, but if it's not, we still have to do more. We need to do another read and go, oh, we don't have any available, so let's get some more, and then it'll copy again, and then do the processing, and then go again. You might hit this loop once or twice, but like you might hit this loop and need to read more. You might on your next iteration through here, hit the loop and not need to read more. So you kind of get into a little tap dance of trying to hit all the cases. And I think this hits all of them. So, and then, and we should never have to check this at the end, but just in case, and these we already did, but um, just in case we'll have a great silence if there's any space left in the output. Okay just in case, but that should always, in theory, well, that's always good. I mean, we have a while loop there, and yeah, let's just get rid of that. We don't need it. Goodbye. Okay, so now we should have this all hooked up. We read from it. We do that. Stream is gone. Let's build it and see what happens. Ninja. Oh, it's not SDL free sample. It's sound free sample. Different library. My bad. There we go. Okay, so now in theory, yes, okay, we don't have okay, we don't have any of the files we need here, so let's copy those real quick here. Classic.winamp scan. We could probably fix this CMake file to deal with this for us, but let's put this here and see if this works. Did I break it? Okay, so we have that. You know what? That's bothering me too, so I'm gonna fix that real fast here. Did you all see that when I started that? See how it flickers once? That is because you are supposed to create an SDL window without any like OpenGL flag or something. But then the renderer comes through and says, I want to use OpenGL. I need to recreate the window properly to get an OpenGL context. This is the way it's supposed to work with SDL, but let's um, create window, SDL window hidden. So it's not visible until after the renderer recreates it with the things it needs. And we'll do. SDL show window window whoops window and theoretically that should fix it I think yep there you go no more flicker let's try that one more time yep no flicker that's pretty good okay so we still have our thing it's still loaded our music let's see if it plays that's never that button I fall for that every time there you go volume still works Balance still works. Okay, good. And that loaded from a WAV file, but it loaded through SDL sound instead of SDL. Um, 
which brings us to, um, let me find this really quickly, Projects Dragon Ruby, a bunch of com Creative Commons things here. If I can remember where I put these, Advanced Audio, is it Audio Mixer? Sounds. Okay, good. Here we go. This will work. Move this out of the way for a second. There's our thing. Uh, we still have music.wave in there, but we also have, okay, so we have an MP3 file. Little drum roll for you. And we have wave files, of course. Little splash for you. And that, and of course we have Aug Vorbis files, which now play. Hooray for middleware, right? That's pretty catchy. I like it. Okay. Holy moly. We got a lot done today, didn't we? It's been an hour. We're at 56 minutes right now. Uh, I'm exhausted. My throat's about to fall out. Um, but this is great. We did so much today. What all do we do here? Let's see. We put in two pieces of middleware, which is not something I usually brag about, but uh, we ripped out all our zip code. We replaced... Oops, the Git shows you the white space that you added. It just drives me nuts. I'm going to have to absolutely go in and fix that in a moment. But um, we refactored this stuff to get rid of stuff. We fixed some bugs that have been bothering me. We got a lot done today uh, and made this thing much more functional. Now we don't just have to go digging around for wave files that we want to play. We can just go in and play lots of different files. And we can use real Winamp skins from the Internet without having to re... Uh, uh, you know, repackage them to have no compression or anything like that. So this is a huge win. Um, I'm I'm pretty happy with how this turned out. Let me see here. I, I forgot to check this, so let me do this real quick here. Let's see. Open. Yeah. Okay. We forgot to check if this thing actually works because we we dra drug a zip file on it just while I'm thinking about it. Let's do a raw directory. Oh, sound format on. Oh. Well, that's something we'll fix next time. Okay, we'll end on a high note and pretend I didn't just try that. All right, so thank you. Uh, don't forget to join the Patreon if you like this kind of thing, because I love money, and you love giving me money, and magical things happen when, you know, I can eat on a regular basis. So definitely feel free to get in on that. You can have your fabulous name in the credits with all these fabulous people that um, you're about to see when I click the stop button here. So, all right, big day, did a lot in an hour. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Take care.